Once again, it's October, and that means Black History Month. And I can't help but think it has now become somewhat of a blessing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and the curse. Listen well, all of you. This curse will last to the end of time. No power on earth can change it. As you have those who are out there deliberately going out of their way to undermine it. I don't want a black history month. And those who are out there trying to coattail. Gay men do identify with the affirming awesomeness of black women. Whilst you have others who are doing what they think is the right thing, but just fogging up the issues. Damn. I can't see shit out of this thing. Dear oh dear oh dear. <laughs> You're crazy. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? When the idea of Black History Month was introduced back in way, 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 way when. Enter my man Carter G. Woodson. Carter was a Harvard trained black historian who, along with Jesse E. Moreland, a prominent minister, founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Carter had been disappointed by the lack of African American history covered in schools. His aim was for children to study the important achievements of black people. In 1926, Carter and Jesse's association sponsored Negro History Week, and this was the very start of Black History Month as we know it. The notion or the premise was to counteract this. Civilization, as we see it now, is a product of Europe and the descendants of Europeans in North America and Australia. And that the last things that I can see that seem to have been devised in Africa were spears of bone-tipped harpoons. This was around 35,000 years ago. Since then, nothing, nothing, nothing. It could be old math. Something that looks at the problem numerically and not theoretically. Math is always dependable. We all know the intelligence of African people and their descendants have been ridiculed and demonized to say the least. The very idea of black people in America contributing to the field of science was largely viewed as a joke. This adulterated perspective was strong in the 1800s, especially when black inventors began contributing to American civilization. Just to give you guys an idea, a popular candidate for Congress in the 19th century once said in reference to black people that no one of the race had ever reached the dignity of an inventor. Writers, scientists, um, politicians. Are you an engineer or an Any achievement by an individual black person was seen just as that, an individual achievement. There are many black people in Britain and America who just get on with their lives and achieve all kinds of things on their own merits without being diversity hires or part of some affirmative action plan whilst projecting that somehow this individual achievement is considered to be a defining equaliser for the group. Where young black boys overachieve is race offered as an explanatory factor. For example, British Ghanaian and Nigerian boys on free school meals, so the poorest sector, mm -hmm. academically outperform and are more likely to go to university than similarly poor white, mixed race and black English kids whose grandparents came from the Caribbean. The four youngest children in Britain to ever take GCSEs are all black. Romari Wilfred, a young black boy from East London, has a higher IQ than Einstein. Mm. Young black men are more disproportionately represented in professional football than any other area of British right. life, with all of the consequences and implications that has for their contribution to the tax base, etc. So it's almost as if a black person does something negative, the entire so-called black community is to blame. Mm -hmm. Black person does something positive and they suddenly regain their humanity and their right to be viewed as an individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when it came to racism and things like that, you know what I'm saying? We do need to remember that when we're talking about murderers and drug dealers, the rioters and the Black Lives Matter activists. Which, in my opinion, is not. Because even today, in general, right, there are a significant number of people out there Right, that still consider black people to be. Summerly sees slaves as mere workhorses rather than people. The light shining off the naked skin of the Negroes is a magnificent sight. In comparison to other groups that use their glorious history.
to embolden the psyche or the subliminal of the citizens of that country, yeah, um, into, into greatness or whatever you want to call it, you know what I mean? And what you'll find is that in the black community, there's not much representation of that. So for example, you don't really hear much about the Moors, right? You don't hear about how the Moors took over Spain, or you hear about how the Moors literally ran shit for hundreds of years prior to the slave trade. And they had money, wealth, power, and all of those things there. The Moors have a very rich history and they ruled Spain and parts of Europe from the year 711 to around 1492. And they brought enormous learning to Spain that over the centuries would continue and have an impact on Europe even through today. The Moors were a group of mostly black Arabs and Hebrews from North Africa. You would do well to mind your tongue, Moor. <laughs> whose civilization and cultural achievements brought significant improvements to Europe during the Middle Ages and height of the Andalusian Empire. As during the Dark Ages, right, which I find quite interesting, the, the term Dark Ages or why they call it the, top, the Dark Ages, um, because at that time, what you had was Europe, Europe itself was a shambles, right? Had nothing, it was down, it was down and out, right? whilst at that time, the Moors were running shit. In the year 711 AD, Muslim forces invaded Spain and created a society so rich and so powerful, it was the envy of the known world. This wasn't the rigid, ferocious Islam of our imaginations, but a progressive, sensuous, intellectually curious culture that for a number of spine-tingling years looked set to sweep through the whole of Europe. It is an incredible story, but one that has been systematically written out of history. You would do well to mind your tongue more. Leaving aside Egypt, which is more properly considered as part of the Fertile Crescent, uh, that part of the Middle East in which much of our civilization has its roots, uh, that part of the Middle East in which much of our civilization has its roots. Right, and the Moors happen to be black, they're dark. These people have become known as the Moors. Propaganda, sparked by the Crusades, has given us an enduring image. The diabolical Moor of dark-skinned, savage, alien enemy. Dark-skinned, savage, alien enemy. So when you talk about the Dark Ages, most people refer to it as in the, the time when it was the Europeans who were down on their look and they didn't have nothing, they were back in, they didn't have no technology, they were back in, you know, living in uh, filth and all those things there. It was a Dark Age for them. But I kind of like look at it as, no, the, the reason why they call it the Dark Ages is because black people were running shit. <laughs> But that's just my uh, uh, conjecture, conjecture there, you know what I mean? From the Bronze Age onwards, there'd been a constant exchange of artefacts and information all across the Eastern Mediterranean. And in fact, a number of Greek ideas stem from Eastern and Egyptian influences. A number of Greek ideas stem from Eastern and Egyptian influences. The bulk of this knowledge was preserved in the great schools and library at Alexandria. And then in 641 AD, the Arabs take over the city and at a stroke have direct access to this precious learning. And at a stroke have direct access to this precious learning. Almost everything that we see around us was designed or invented by people of European origin. Which now leads me on to a story that I saw in the paper about Wales making it mandatory to teach black history in their schools, right? 
which on paper sounds like a good thing but I have my concerns again because my issue is now who's doing the teaching and what are they going to teach I believe that the evidence is very strong that statistically the odds are less in favour of somebody of African heritage having an exceedingly high IQ than of a white person or somebody from an East Asian family being so endowed. Because if you have a school that, let's say, predominantly white teachers, and you have a few white teachers who have this kind of attitude... A-levels were a very different thing from GCSEs. Students need to be capable of independent thought, that means learning things and then drawing deductions from what they've learned. A-levels require complex ideas to be juggled in the head and linked to each other. Parental input cannot help with this and it relies entirely upon how bright a student is, how they, well they do at A-levels. The truth is that there seem to be fewer children of African and Caribbean origin capable of those sorts of sophisticated mental operations and the ones who did well enough at GCSEs now start to struggle and fall behind. The truth is that there seem to be fewer children of African and Caribbean origin capable of those sorts of sophisticated mental operations. And they happen to be on the board that's right in the curriculum itself, as in, okay, they're right in the directions of what the kids are supposed to be learning at such a young age, right? Uh, they're going to have a skewed perspective in the representation of black history by skating over some certain things. Wilberforce was a clumsy political strategist at times. He and his friend Thomas Clarkson introduced legislation to limit the slave trade in 1789, 1791, 1792, 93, 97, 98, 99, 1804, and 1805, only to be defeated every time. Opposition to Wilberforce became so fierce. Opposition to Wilberforce became so fierce that one friend feared he would be barbecued by African merchants and eaten by Guinea captain. And in my opinion, their, their views will be tainted with a lot of white saviorism. <laughs> That's a word, white saviorism. I'm coining a new phrase. In July of 1833, three days before William Wilberforce died, it became clear that they had the votes they needed to end slavery in the British Empire. The next month, the House of Lords passed the Slavery Abolition Act. As probably the only member of this house who actually grew up and went to school in Africa, I can tell you that's not what we're taught. That's not what we're taught. Much more is taught about the history. Much more is taught about the history of black slave traders, of black slave traders who existed before and after the transatlantic slave trade. Before and after the transatlantic slave trade. Before and after the transatlantic slave trade. In which black people's achievements throughout history will not be credited solely by for black people without having a white person's uh, contribution attributed to it. When we look at Africa as it is now and observe such things as the vastly increased lifespan of those living there, brought about by modern medicine, along with the buildings, roads, cars, aeroplanes, electricity, computers and mobile telephones and all the rest of it, we cannot help but wonder what things would be like had Africa been left to its own devices and there had been no importation of European technology or culture. So you could say, yes, we all know black people did this and black people did that, but if it wasn't for the white man, that would be sewn into the fabric of whatever history they're teaching, right? What did Africa create before the arrival of white Europeans in the 15th and 16th centuries? Which in turn kind of contradicts the idea of black people pulling themselves up by the bootstraps. Uh, uh, hmm. You've seen recently, since uh, 2020, when black people have tried to, or attempt to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, as you say, 
as they say should i say not you but as they say i just want to say well done for organizing such a prosperous and motivating event today it was just done off of like a conversation in a whatsapp group that has brought us all together here today um, so well done for the boys as well the what for the alliance boys well done please can we get a round of applause for them as well please as we've seen when black people do try to specifically do something for ourselves or there's a, a rally for black people to invest in black business or do something specifically for black people invest in your own businesses we have to engage with the youth i completely agree with that they're met with a whole little back um, met with a whole lot of backlash and talking about oh that's racist that is if you do that specifically for black people okay and the issue that i have or my argument with that is that well you know what right and I put it simply like this. If you're at the back and you want to get to the front, or if you're fourth and want to get to second or first, then at some point you're going to have to accept that you're going to have to pass third and second. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And even though third and second aren't going to like the fact that you pass them, in order for you to progress or get out of a certain rut or whatever it is, you're going to have to do that. Verstappen leads from Bottas who locks up again. Hamilton is trying round the outside of his teammate and might squeeze through on the inside now into second place and he does. You can't keep elevating. You can't pretend that you're better in yourself by always being at the back. And you cannot improve if you're going to be at the back um, pushing everyone forward in front of you. You know what I'm saying? The truth is for a few to be immortal many must die and what it seems to me and how i kind of view things is that in order for one to remain dominant yeah others obviously have to be beneath you or subservient to you right therefore you really truly can't have equality right in which in the claim in which people are trying to claim that this country is equal and all of that blah 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 which as a work as 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 um classes may go you might find that working class and you know are equal to working class and middle class and so far equal to middle class and upper class working around but in general uh, when it comes to the difference between uh races or ethnic groups right in order for one group to stay dominant the other ones cannot be in positions of power or perceived to have power yeah therefore you cannot be equal in that stance the strength of empire is is conquest and credit you can't understand the history of the British Empire without understanding Britain's central role in slavery. The British were a bunch of warmongers. The empire is based on money and based on violence, on the ability to kind of employ large numbers of troops to fight. Empire, in a sense, is a career. It's a line of work for a large section of Britain's elite. Which I do see sometimes as uh, black people taking as a false hope, right? in thinking that you know what right if we make everything all equal and we'll we got the same job opportunities we've got the same this and we've got the same all of that and we're all equal yeah it sounds again sounds good on paper but the reality is if the people's mentality is that you are still beneath them like for example this jake guy as a white man i won't be listening to people of color because uh they're no good in positions of power uh, um jake a black man's place is under a white man. But let's say at the end of the day, for me, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself, yeah, I think that Black History Month should be more than just a reminder of a few inventions that black people uh, did and a few contributions that black people made towards um, society today with these inventions and their involvement in advancing in technology and stuff like that. Um, it should be more than that, right? Uh, what I believe is that it should also be a remembrance and an introduction, a uh, time to introduce, which there are people doing it, uh, don't get me wrong, but it should be more emphasised on it though. The Moors brought many advancements to Europe which were not known during that time, including advancements in the sciences. These scientific achievements came at a dark time in Europe's history and brought an overabundance of positive change to the region as a whole. The achievements and advancements brought by the Moors span across the fields of astronomy, philosophy, and mathematics, as well as architecture, medicine, and others. They brought new technologies and a new numbering system. Much of these advancements can be attributed to an emphasis on education by the Moors. 
One of the most fascinating examples of the architectural achievements the Moors brought to Europe can be witnessed in the magnificent Alhambra in Granada in Spain. And that should be showing black people that we weren't just slaves. We were and we did have empires. Empires come and empires go. And we, at a certain periods of time in history, did have empires, just like Britain has an empire, just like the Roman had an empire, yeah? And we were running shit. We had the technology. We did have the advancement on others in which when we fell, they advanced too. And that's how empires, dynasties work, right? Example again, the Moors. And by introducing that and showing black people that, yes, as a group, we were powerful, yeah? And as a group that we ran shit and we knew how and we advanced, we had our own advancement at those times, yeah? Will bakers be more confident in believing, yeah, you're not right. Black people are not just, like I said, we're slaves. And we did have, again, we did run, run shit, basically, yeah? And not everything that we have today is, de uh, is down to or due to specifically, it was all white men did it. Just to remind ourselves of the world outside Africa, there were clocks, watches, magnetic compasses, ocean-going ships, writing, printing, presses, algebra, gunpowder, stone buildings, cranes, pulleys, spinning wheels, ceramics, thermometers, concrete, combination locks, spectacles and a thousand other things. Right? That's what we should be teaching about history of, right? And to me, that would, in, that, that would emb embolden and empower the group, right? Rather than, as, you know, right, rather than seeing individual achievements. And no, no disrespect to the individual achievements, you know what I mean? Everything's good. But even those things there, they should be seen as, how I put it, they should be seen as how white people do it, yeah? The Wright brothers invented the airplane, white people invented the airplane, right? Black person invents, I don't know, a car or whatever it is, and it was he did that, but all the all, all the other black people didn't do shit, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and anyway, that was it. Uh, I'm just looking for my notes here, but yeah, I've got my talking points out of the way for this one. You know what I mean? And but again, as you know what to do, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, should Black History be more, should Black History Month be more than just an, uh, a reminder of what a couple of individuals do? And should Black people as a group be more uh, represented as in our power when we had the Moors and when we were running Egypt and things like that? Should that come more to the forefront so Black people can understand? And don't forget and do introduce to remind people that you know empires come and go. Should that be more at the forefront? Yeah, for Black History Month. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm out. Peace. Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes.